All right, so let's get started and talk a little bit about different types of investment property. Typically, your investor that you're going to be dealing with is going to be dealing with either one or two types of property. It's either going to be residential, which I suspect is probably what 80% of you guys are going to be dealing with. The second type of property is called CRE, the commercial real estate. Commercial real estate is a property that is excused for, <laughs> that is used, sorry, exclusively for investment. So we're not really going to be talking about owner-occupied commercial property. That's where your buyer client may buy a commercial building and be a tenant in it for their business. We're really going to be talking about guys that buy commercial properties only as investment and would have other tenants in that space. So there are several different kinds of investment commercial grade property. We're going to get these out of the way because like I said, probably only about 20% of you are going to be dealing with this. Uh, there's a couple of uh, investment groups that deal specifically with commercial around it. Uh, so check your local area for those. The most common one that you will see is office. Uh, office space is obviously where people tend to do office work. Kind of funny how they name them that way. Now, typically office is also further broken down into three different categories. You've got class A office space, and that represents the newest buildings with the prettiest aesthetics, uh, the best infrastructures, you know, all of the good things that most people typically want in today's world when they see a new high-rise office space. Obviously, that's going to be the most expensive type of office space. Now, Class B can be just a little bit below that, and they often are a little older, maybe a little more run down. The good thing about Class B is that they are typically the sweet spot for a lot of investors because of the fact that they've had some normal wear and tear. Uh, they're 10, 12, 15 years old. There is some opportunity to gain value in those. Um, and the third one would be Class C, usually over 20 years old, less sought out areas, uh, probably need of a lot of maintenance. So these could also be great targets for investors. Now I'm not saying Class A is not, but typically Class A is bought solely for a return on their investment, okay? We've got industrial building, industrial pro properties, and once again, they could be heavy manufacturing industrial, they can be light assembly, they can be just solely straight warehouses. All of these types of properties typically are larger. They're easier to maintain because there's less. Um, there's an old joke in the commercial investing. The less toilets per square feet, the better. Um, they typically have great highway access and they do at some point may have a little office space. Sometimes there's a term that they use for these. It's called flex, flex space, where their front half or the front 20% of the building may be office and then the back is going to be warehouse. That's a very common type of industrial building. And I think we actually mentioned that a little later on. Retail space, retail space is what everybody imagines when they see commercial, because these are the strip centers, uh, this, the big shopping mall, and they can range in size from single tenant, four or 5,000 square feet, to well-known malls that may be 50, 60,000 square feet. So those have the, are their own breed as well. Warehouses uh, is typically a subcategory of industrial, but warehousing, uh, the big large properties that store uh, easy highway access, as we mentioned once a minute ago. Um, and then there's other types of commercial 
that you're going to see. We've mentioned flex space. Hotels are always going to be considered commercial. There's just plain land that could be used down the road for something else. Then there's special use commercial, things like ballparks, uh, stadiums, uh, golf courses, all of these other things could be investment grade property in the commercial world. Now, what's the advantage of commercial property? The best advantage to commercial property is they usually have high dollar amount returns and they have high monthly cash flows. So that's one of the best things. Now, the most, the best thing to me about in uh, commercial grade property is the fact that the valuation can change quickly. And what I mean by that is because commercial properties are typically valued based upon the income it generates. So it's very easy, well, let's put it this way, it's easier than residential to take a $500,000 building that's vacant, put tenants in it over the course of a year, and that property is now worth a million million and a half in 12 months because of the income that's now producing it. Whereas you're going to find out when we talk about residential here in just a minute, that typically even investment grade residential is valued based on comps. So it doesn't matter typically if a single family home is vacant or full, the value is based on comps. And it's hard to double the value of a residential home when it's based on sales immediately around it, as opposed to the valuing of a commercial property that is based on the income it's generating. Now, what are some of the disadvantages to commercial property? Primarily, they are heavy, heavily regulated. Uh, they've got zoning issues. You've got you know, wastewater issues, you've got runoff issues, environmental issues. Um, so there is a lot of regulation that goes into them. ADA compliance issues, they've got parking issues, all kinds of things. And obviously the other issue that most people have is the actual just cost of acquisition. Um, very few people can go out and have the down payment and secure a loan for a four or five million dollar building, all right? Now in the residential property, these are properties that are structures that are reserved for people and human uh, habitation, all right? So living quarters, living structures, uh, and they typically make money through the collection of rent and through the appreciation of the property or sometimes both of them. And the most common residential investment properties that you're going to see is the single family home, all right? And you guys all know the definition of a single family home, right? Now, what's the advantage? It's easy to rent. Pretty simple to rent a single family home. What's the downside to single family homes? Well, it's either 100% occupied or 100% vacant. That's a problem with an investor. If there's only one source of income, i.e. single family home, he's either making money or not. So that's a downside. Now, the second type of home is a double or a duplex. And the question I wanna ask you guys is, do you know the definition or the difference between those? Really? Because different parts of the country have different definitions. For an example, in some parts of the United States, they call a double two single family homes beside each other on the same level where a duplex is more what the Midwest would call a townhome, one on top of the other. So not a big deal for us here, but just understand that sometimes doubles and duplexes in different areas may have different connotations. Now, what's the advantage to renting doubles? Well, 
the advantage is the counter opposite of the disadvantage we just talked about a minute ago with a single family home. The advantage is you've got two opportunities to gain income. So if your property is only half full, you might be getting enough income to at least cover the nut and make a little bit of money where the second one that's sitting vacant while you rent it out may not be quote unquote, and I'm using finger quotes, you guys here can see me, but people at home um, covering your nut, all right? They may not, that's going to be the gravy. What's the disadvantage? The disadvantage is the actual rentability because people want to live in single family homes. If they can't own one, at least it looks like they own one, but when they live in a double, typically that's a less desirable than the single family home because you've got a neighbor that's literally on the other side of the wall. Multi-unit, now for the purpose of this conversation, multi-unit in the residential context is going to be one to four units because once you go to five units or more, it typically slides up into that commercial property because of rules and regulations and financing and things of that nature. So if we're talking residential multi-unit, what we're talking about is one to four units. Now what's the advantage? Now the advantage becomes twice what it was with a double. Now you may have three of your units vacant and one of them full and you're breaking even. Now you've got a whole bunch of room for profit with units number two, three, and four. Once they become full, now you're making enough money to make it worth a while. What's the disadvantage? Well, the disadvantage now becomes even more so than the double. You know, now people that live in four units typically are renters and everybody knows they're a renter. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that there is a perception sometimes that people go, well, I want to look like I own a home, so I rent a single family. Once again, the disadvantage is now you potentially have two neighbors. You got one above you and one across the hall. So those are some of just the disadvantages. All right. So you've got commercial, you've got residential. Both of these types of properties are available for uh, your investor typically. And it's not like it's a graduation thing. People don't start in residential and then graduate to commercial. They are enough different that people that want to start in commercial just, just start start investing. And if you're going to be a broker for that person, you need to be cognizant of, well, that guy's a commercial investor. I've got different rules to play by, different game uh, methodology to think about, but residential is the closest for most realtors on buying and selling. All right. So we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the two different types of strategies that an investor uses. Doesn't matter which property, all right? That's the good thing. These strategies that we're going to talk about play out in both the residential world and the commercial world, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well.